Do you really think we should be sending riot squads into, you know, to deal with people fleeing a humanitarian crisis? Uh, not necessarily, no. I think the riot squads were sent in against the people that were protesting more than against the, uh, the children themselves. Well, do you think we should be protesting children coming into this country fleeing death squads? No, I don't know. There's a lot of argument that they have a, you know, a terrible situation that they're in. You know, if I was living in a place that had death squads, I'm sure I'd be fleeing too with my children or the children or you just get them out. I, you know, from what I've learned and studied on these, you know, people coming across, I, I personally don't have any doubt that I would feel the same way and they would come after it. I just uh, have some differences on how we should run our country, but but yeah, no, they're they're in a bad spot. Those places are getting more and more violent every day. It's just it's just horrifying when you see what they're going through down there. Yeah, and 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 frankly, our State Department is, in my opinion, is not helping a great deal. Yeah. Um, and and we haven't been since the '80s. But mm -hmm. um, my understanding was that over at your blog that you've mm -hmm. been basically supportive of the Marietta protesters and and dismissive yeah. of uh, the Obama administration. Why? How? How and why? I would be dismissive of the... I just cannot understand why we can't all get behind controlling the border. I don't think we should get, turn away these children, but they can't just be flooding across the border freely. Um, we're like the only country that allows this to happen at all. I mean, you can't get across Canada's border like this if anyone wanted to, but... Actually, you can easily get across Canada's border. I used to live in Vermont. We used to drive up and drive across the Canadian border all the time. I mean, there's there's all kinds of rural areas where there's no checkpoints whatsoever. Yeah. Well, I've never seen anybody get across in Minnesota real easily. So See, here's the thing. Spot. You know, in the United States, we had this border. We've had this border with Mexico since we fought the Mexican-American War. You know, since President Polk did in the 1840s uh, over the loud objections of Abraham Lincoln, and that border has always been wide open. And we tried to, you know, and, and people would come north to during the picking season, principally to California, uh, typically about a million people a year by the 1960s. And they would come north and they would pick, and then they would go back south because they wanted to go home. And so we tried to regulate this with the Bracero program in the 60s where we issued basically kind of, you know, six-month green cards to people. But the problem was that the employers were, were using their ability to throw people out of the Bracero program as a way to threaten these immigrants saying, you know, I'll, I'll uh, say that you're not a good employee and you'll lose your ability to be here, which is their ability to make a living for their family, you know, take money back and feed their family for literally a couple of years from one season. And so the Bracero program was ended in the 70s because it was just really so, you know, racist and dysfunctional. And Reagan did a fairly decent comprehensive immigration reform the problem was that in 86 after reagan did that he stopped explicitly stopped enforcing the laws against mostly white mostly rich uh... employers in the united states who had been hiring people who were hiring people who were not in this country legally prior to nineteen eighty six one of the best industries that you could get into in the united states for a u.s. citizen was meatpacking or construction because meatpacking was paying thirty and forty dollars an hour in today's dollars because they were good union jobs and construction was paying you know anywhere from twenty five to fifty dollars an hour in today's dollars because they were good union jobs and now in both of those industries they're filled with people who are illegal immigrants you know who who are here without documentation and the reason why is because the reagan administration made this intentional effort we're not going to like eisenhower had literally and like kennedy did and johnson did we're not going to throw any more white rich employers in jail period and so what that did was it created this giant magnet you know hey there's jobs up north and the and the administration's not prosecuting you know the employers and so eleven million people came up here for jobs why don't you know it seems to me that we have an illegal employer problem not an illegal immigrant problem and if we started throwing some rich white guys in jail for hiring people who are here illegally that this problem would vanish really really quickly yeah, if they're hiring illegal immigrants, then they're part of the problem, definitely. But we definitely have a magnet problem, and it's you know the word out that the children are going to get amnesty is the word through the, all the all the uh, countries. Mexico, well, they're, the they're, those countries. They're I mean, Joe, Joe Biden, you, Joe Biden went down there a couple of weeks ago, and and they're actually we are paying for television ads. Yeah. To, you know where the local politicians are saying you know the 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 uh, dream program is only for people who were in the United States before the, 2011. There is, which Jay Johnson said on, on uh, Meet the Press this weekend, 
And there, there is no, there is no such thing. You know, if somebody's, you know, there's this organized crime group that's, you know, people smuggling that is promoting this, they're lying. And they're, they're telling their people this. What else are we supposed to do? Well, I mean, if you build a 12 foot wall, you're just, you're just, you're just creating an industry for the, for 13 foot fences. Well, fences, drones, whatever it takes to lock this border, it has to be locked down. We don't know that it's just Central American guys that need a better life coming across. We have no. That's the vast majority across. of the children. It's well over 80% of these children are, are from Central America. They've traveled right. all the way through Mexico. Thousand yeah, miles. I, I understand that. And it's, you know, why wouldn't they? And that's your point. And I would maybe agree with you on that point. But not knowing who's coming across our border is, is insane. There, there could be, you know, at the 20%, we don't know who they are. They're a combination of... I just don't see it as a big deal. I mean, you know, the guys who did 9-11 came in on, on tourist what visas. If the guy with the, doesn't have pot in his backpack. What if he's got a nuclear weapon back there? I mean, well, it's, yeah, it's like insane. I said, the guys who did 9-11 came in on tourist visas. People, you know, bad guys can get in this country really easily. All they have to do is Especially get a tourist visa. Open border. Especially with the open border, they can get in easily. Well, but, you know, we've got an open border with Canada. No Canadians are trying to come here because they have a higher standard of living than we do. Well, we can worry about the Canadians coming south after we secure the southern border. That's the one that's being overrun right. right now. All right. All right.